Welcome to Daily Success. Listen in on these personal conversations with today's leaders, innovators, and influencers as they discuss daily success principles, systems, and solutions. Get ready for daily success. Now, here's your host. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Debbie Montgomery Johnson. We're going to be discussing our daily word of the day, daily success word phrase, stand up. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about Debbie. Debbie is a number one best-selling author, international speaker, radio host, and businesswoman, and she is a woman on a mission. In her book, The Woman Behind the Smile, she shares her personal experience with a love that turned into betrayal and financial disaster, and she removes the mask of shame and shows others how to do the same. She's from Vermont, and she's a graduate of the Phillips Exeter Academy and the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. She is the president of Benfotiamine Net Incorporated, a vitamin supplement company that provides an alternative for the pain of neuropathy, a nerve disorder. Benfotiamine takes an extraordinary difference or makes an extraordinary difference, especially for diabetics and their families. Products and educational information can be found at benfocomplete.com and of course I'll include the link to that in our show notes and her background is so diverse now listen to this she worked as a paralegal and a bank branch manager and she became a U.S. Air Force officer serving as an intelligence officer at the Pentagon the Defense Intelligence Agency in Wiesbaden, Germany. Debbie is just like you. She's a woman on a mission to live an authentic, joyful life as the woman with the smile rather than behind it. She's been seen on CBS This Morning, NBC Channel 5, and she was even interviewed by the Senate Select Committee on Aging. Debbie was the 2017 California Women's Conference Speak Off winner and Woman on Fire Author Award recipient. Well, my goodness, Debbie, you are on fire. Let's talk more about the daily success word phrase of the day, stand up. What is your definition? Well, it's interesting because once you say it, I just want to stand up and be out of the picture. (laughs) Stand up for me is something that uh, over the years, we all have stories, we all have something that happens in our lives, and typically we're a little bit ashamed or vulnerable about it, and we just want to put up a mask and hide. Uh, For me, it's putting up the smile and hiding uh, because I don't want people to know that I have some cracks in my, you know, perfect veneer. Um, So stand up for me was just find your power, stand up, and own up up to what's happened in your past. Um, and realize that it's part of your life. And if you stand up and you're open and vulnerable and you can, uh, if you have to seek out some assistance, I mean, I did the stand up series originally and it was a seven, seven words that came up for stand up and, and really seek out someone that you can talk to, someone that you trust, uh, and then acknowledge what happened to you, own up, realize it's not going to end your world. The past is the past, ponder it. You know, and then look to the look to your present and look to the future and then make it noteworthy. Write it down. You know, I kept journals. I had 4,000 pages of journals when I was doing my online dating thing. And uh, it turned out I thought it was family history and it turned out to be <laughs> evidence. Um, <laughs> but it was part of it. It was very uh, therapeutic to write things down to make it noteworthy. Um, and then I had to deal with what was going on. I had to deal with the financial disaster. I had to deal with my family. I had to deal with actually telling people. And that was really tough. Um, but I became unstoppable. You know, it, in the stand up, the you in, in, in the stand up is unstoppable. And, and I found my power. I found great power in being able to reveal the one thing that I thought was the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. 
um, not while I was doing it, but later on looking back, you know, hindsight's 2020. But when I realized that I had a story to tell that was could affect a lot of people, uh, and it has affected a lot of people because so many of us go through things and things happen to us and we feel that we're living them by ourselves and don't ever want to tell because, of, again, of the, um, the shame or the guilt. But I realized that by telling my story and standing up for myself and for all women and men that have been taken advantage of, that we find great power in knowing that someone else has been through the same thing or similar things that we've been through. And it allows us to stand up and then tell our story. And that's a, there's a great movement going forward to you know, be able to own up and stand up. And just for me, it was finding my power back, finding my voice, because I found over the 26 years of marriage that I didn't like contention. And, and my fallback position was stuff it, be quiet. You know, I always felt I was going to die of an ulcer if I was going to die of anything because I really internalized. And by standing up now, I, I internalize, but I'm more able to speak about it, articulate it, um, and just get it out there. Just get it out. And that gives me great power to, to speak and get my story out. Can you share a little bit more of your story about the woman behind the smile? Because a lot of our listeners uh, may not have heard what actually happened to you and how you found out and, and why now this, you are literally the face of a stand-up movement. Well, I'm going to put this up. If they haven't seen it, this is my book. It's called The Woman Behind the Smile, and it is the triumph over the ultimate online dating betrayal. And it came about um, 10 years ago, this past week, actually, my husband passed away suddenly. And I was thrown into being a single mom, a widow, and I hated that word. I had to run his company. I was just consumed with work for a long, for six months at least. And my friend said, you need a life. You have to get a life. And for them, that meant dating, getting back out again. And you know, I was 52, and, and I hadn't done that really since my early 20s. And I didn't like it when I was young, and, and it was hard to come out again, you know, because my life was my kids. I had four children, and, uh, and all of a sudden, I had to be vulnerable again, and I had to put myself out there, and, and I think all those insecurities of a 16-year-old came out saying I wasn't pretty enough, wasn't smart enough, wasn't all those I'm not enough, and now I'm, you know, a widow on top of that, and I had a company, and Oh my gosh, it was very, you have to be brave to come out online. And I, I give people credit for doing that. However, there are some cautions when you're coming out online. And I realized that you don't want to put out there that you're newly divorced or a widow or that you've had something vulnerable in your life happen because there are predators out there. Nobody talks about them until it, even after it happens. So I had a wonderful experience online. I met a gentleman that was a, an international businessman. He was from London. He happened to be a widow also, widower also. And we carried on what I considered a safe relationship because it was long distance. And it was extraordinary. I, I was able to, all those years that I, I stuffed my feelings with him, I was able to write them out. And, and make them noteworthy because he could read them, I could read them, I could review them later on. And so that went on for a couple of years. But what I also realized is that I'm a very giving, helpful person. And he had a company and I understood what he did and he asked for my help. And I started to help him financially, a little bit at a time. And then it grew into something large. And over the course of two years, it turned into be a very expensive financial adventure. Um, and he ended up telling me that it was confessing after two years that it had all been a scam. Now, here's my caution for online dating. It's a great tool, but if you don't see the person within two weeks, you don't see them in person or online or something, see the whites of their eyes, then walk away. Because I realize now, after it's, it's been a long time now, five years, since, it has, since he actually confessed, he confessed that he had fallen in love with me, and he confessed that he scammed me out of a million dollars. And I hear the, <gasps> yes, I didn't have a million dollars to give to him, but I, I considered him after two years, he was family. I had gotten so attached 
that I would have done anything for a family member to get them out of trouble, to get them home, to get whatever. And, and I put myself at great financial risk to do it. But my heart led my head. And I just felt like this was the right thing to do. And it wasn't. But looking back now, when I, when I finally came out, because I actually hid from it, I went to the FBI and they told me there was nothing they could do because it turns out that he was in Nigeria. I never knew that. So people that say, why did you do that? I never knew that he was there. Um, when they told me there was nothing they could do, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've been around the government a lot. If the FBI can't help me, then no one can help me. And I put up that mask, put on the smile, and I pretended that nothing happened. I told my friends it just didn't work out. Well, internally, I was dying because here I had lost, you know, I'd, I'd given away a lot of money. I'd given up my retirement funds. I had sold trees I had as investments. I, I had done so much. But the hardest thing for me is that I hadn't told anybody, um, not even my family, except for my mother and dad, and, and they knew all along. But I was, I was holding back this huge secret, and it was holding me back from living. And um, it was very sad. And actually, it was worse than when Lou died. Because now the grief was brought on by something I had done, not something that happened to me. And, and it, was, it was awful. But I was at a meeting one time, and it's, it's, you, you've been there, the Women's Prosperity Network speakers training. I was there, and a friend of mine at lunch mentioned something about online dating. And I, I think the story is I rolled my eyes at her. And she said, what's that about? And I, I told her, and she said, Deb, you have to tell that story. And of course, inside of me was just going, no way. And she said, you must, because my mother was scammed out of $80,000. And then women started coming up to me. I was, you know, taken in a Ponzi scheme or I was taken advantage in person. And they said, you have to tell the story because too many people are being hurt and no one wants to talk about it. And I totally understood why they didn't want to talk about it. But over that weekend, I developed um, the story, you know, developed an, an, a way to stand up and to speak up. And it became very powerful. And the more I talked about it, the better I felt about it. And I could disassociate myself with what actually happened emotionally. And that was huge. It was a huge healing point moment for me to move on from the story, not to forget it, but to be able to use it to educate. And that's what my movement is about, is to educate people about being careful when you're online, being careful about your your information that you put out there. And I think, Tammy, you've talked about this, about online um, protection. Yes. Be careful what you put out there because it'll go around the world in a flash. And, I, and, and the, um, in online dating relationships, it's not only the woman that is a victim in those things. The pictures that are used of the men um, I have two men friends that their pictures have been used for fake profiles. And those guys now are working with the FBI from the other side because scammers will take pictures off of Facebook, off of LinkedIn, off of anything and create profiles. And we don't know about that usually because it's not talked about. When people talk about online dating, they're typically not talking about scammers. They're talking about falling in love and all the fun stuff. But there is, there, it's a billion dollar business. Uh, just, uh, and it makes me so upset that even today I'm talking to women that are in the middle of it and they, and it, it doesn't sound rational, but there's, you're talking about your heart. When your heart is involved, your, your logic goes out, out the window. And uh, it's so important that people are at least educated to, to do some. Google searches or to do some picture searches to really vet the person that you're talking to. Because I would never send money to anybody. I am what they call one of those damn Yankees. I was very frugal with my money. And for me to have given away so much so freely to a man I never met was just out of character for me. But it happens and it happens every day. And it's happening. And the reason I was, I was asked or was interviewed for the Senate Select Committee on Aging is because the, the senators are so worried about our seniors, which I am a part of now. Uh, but the scams are being targeted to our parents and to folks that are, you know, alone. And 
the scammers are very well educated. They are very manipulative and they know how to get your heart to rule your head. And it's sad because people are losing their homes, they're losing their retirement, they're losing their bank accounts, they're losing everything. And then at 65, 70, 75 years old, where do you go from there? Your family doesn't want to talk to you if you've even told them. Your friends have walked away. Um, but here's a fact that most fraud is perpetrated by members of your family, not by people that you don't know. So my, my word of caution here, when you're, when you're doing something online or you're involved in things, be really, really careful that your head is leading your heart. And, and if you're, you know, want to send money to somebody, get a buddy and say, does this seem right? Can you help me with this? If you're online dating and you, and you look at a profile, have someone else look at it. Don't do it alone. Because if you're home alone, you know, you become drawn into that, into that relationship because it, it becomes your lifeline. And the scammers know it. And they, they'll reel you in. It's called grooming. And they'll do it over a period of time. But they are very good at it. And, uh, and I just want you to be careful. Just... Take care of yourself. You know, stand up and, and don't do it alone. That's it's important. Don't do it alone. Bring it in. And you want it, if you met a man in person or met someone in person, you'd want to share it with your friends. You know, you'd want to take him out and introduce him to everybody. But the scammers try to isolate you. And they don't want you talking to your family members or your friends. And they get really angry when you start to question things that are going on. So it's it's a whole different thing that I, you know, I'm sorry that I, that I got involved in it, but you know, I learned a lot and I realized that in, in my life, this has probably been the, one of the greatest learning tools that I've had to go through. I don't wish it on anybody, anybody else. But for me, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself, but in the end, I found my voice again. And I found that I'm very strong inside and I don't like contention, but I don't have to be a doormat. And I can stand up for me. I can stand up for my family. I can stand up for my values. But right now, I'm standing up for my purpose. And my purpose is to empower women and men to, um, to take their life back, essentially, after something's happened. Because you can't change the past. But you can change your present and your future. And uh, that's what standing up is all about, is just getting that power back. Wow, that, that is powerful. <laughs> and one of the things that I noticed, you mentioned something about your scammer guy, and I swear they must have a scammer school because typically they say that they're a widower or, and, or that they are um, something happened to their wife, and they sometimes will say they have a kid that's normally about 10 years old. Yep. Normally, they, they are. They say that they're like an international businessman, or they work on an oil, or sometimes they're in the military, some way so that they can not be here, <laughs> close to where we are. And then, of course, like what you just said, they often will um, even send flowers. I know situations where people have actually received flowers from the people thinking, oh, it has to be a real person because they sent me flowers, so it couldn't be someone in Nigeria. But that's part of, of the, um, pro like you said, the grooming process. That, that, that is so phenomenal. And the fact that you took this story and now are helping thousands of people with the story you're speaking all over the world and in the United States, Canada, and you've been on television and do you still have your talk show? Um, going? The, voice, the voice America um, radio show that we had, I, I don't have it anymore. Oh, we did okay. it for 14 weeks and it was phenomenal. It was called defining moments and it was on the voice America.com women's channel. And it was an opportunity for me to interview um, about 20 men and women, and they were able to tell us a story that had happened to them. It, is, it could have been abuse. It could have been one of the gals' husband was killed. Uh, it was just an extraordinary opportunity to, to get people to stand up 
and to talk about uh, something that had happened in their life. So it's online still. It's on voiceamerica.com and, uh, and also on my website, which is thewomenbehindthesmile.com. There are links to the, to, to the uh, radio shows. That was that, a great experience. That would have been, I was, and I'll admit it, I was a little jealous <laughs> when you- You were there, you were there. Won, and I was so proud at the same time, but the prize was to, to have this uh, show, the Your Defining Finding Moments show, and on Voice America. So that was just a really cool example of when you stand up and take, and you had the courage to tell your story at the California Women's Conference and you actually won that phenomenal prize, that that was just, a, a for me, I was just like, wow. And, and like I said, I was a little bit jealous because how cool would that be to have a produced show um, on Voice America? To me, that was just like a really cool thing. So now, what are you doing now? I know that, that you've been, tra again, traveling, and that you also do have a business besides the stand-up movement. So what, what are you doing now um, in coming up in the future? Well, to get the word out, I've, I've put myself, again, I'm putting myself out there uh, to meet different people, to, to be with different organizations. I, I was able to participate with a group that I, uh, girls that I met in San Diego. We were part of Awakening Giants, which is ultimately going to be a television series where we took, there are going to be a hundred uh, entrepreneurs that have given, you know, some time and, and their stories to change the world. And some of the women I met over there were from London, and we put together a book called um, the Pay It Forward series, Notes to My Younger Self, and I'll put a plug out for that because we just put this out uh, last week. But what this was is, is 18 women standing up telling their stories, and mine was actually not the woman behind the smile story. It was a story about when I was a young, a young teenager, a um, couple weeks before I went away to private school, and we had a fire in our home. And I talked, I actually put how my father described it. Um, but I was look, I look back at my younger self. We all have pivotal moments, or for me, I call it defining moments. And when I was 15 and we had this fire, I lost a lot of my, my things, you know? And it was awful. And I described that. And then I went away to school and I was alone and I didn't know people. And it was difficult educationally to, you know, to get thrown in in January to the middle of the year. Uh, to a very difficult educational process, but I did it. And I wrote a note back to myself saying, you know, this is what you learned through that process. And you learned that the most important thing in life is not, is not things, it's family, it's people. And I realized that that's how I was able to give so much away to Eric, is that I wasn't tied to the physical things of life. Um, I realized that I, I like this, that the last suit, my last suit has no pockets. I will not be taking any money or any things with me. It's the relationships that I develop. And the story of, in the notes to my younger self, I realized that, that it's my family that is so important. It's being honest with my family and my friends that is most important. And so we're taking, the book is actually, it's a great idea we're paying it forward. In the inside of the book, there's a, a section where you can write your, your little story and then you pass it on. Our goal is to get it to a million women or a billion women around the world and a billion men and women around the world. So I get a book and then I write my story in it and I hand it off to someone or some of the girls have left it in the train station, left it in the airport. I left it out in Texas. Um, and we're going to take this around the world because again, whatever your story is, it's really important to share it because there's someone that may be sitting beside you that is going through the same thing and she's afraid to say anything because she feels like she's the only one going through it. Well, spoiler alert, there's not one thing in our lives that someone else hasn't been through yet. And when you find out that someone has been through, you have an instant buddy. I mean, I have these best friends that are my online women that I, some I've never met before, but we have something in common. We have a story in common, uh, tragic sometimes, but we understand each other from an emotional, spiritual point of view. And it's very powerful to pe put people together that have that same feeling. 
Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. I, I'm little by little getting out there and, and speaking about um, the woman behind the smile again. I'm working with a support group down in, in Miami called SCARS, which is a Society for Citizens Against Romance Scams. Um, that's an online romance thing. I'm working with the Senate. Um, I actually got a message from AARP. I may do an, an article for the AARP magazine, which I thought was cool. Because, okay. again, yes. again, they have a huge anti-scam alert group with AARP, which is phenomenal. And uh, so I'm doing anything that I can to get out there and to speak up and to make people aware that this is happening every day. And you said that they're well-trained. There are universities in Nigeria that train scammers. And they're huge. Again, it's billions of dollars that they scam out of people. And not just online dating. The biggest scam now is against businesses where they are sending emails from CEOs to the CFOs, the financial folks saying, why are money immediately to XYZ company? Because that's what they do. But the scammers have been able to scam billions of dollars out of international businesses. Wow. And it's huge. It's huge. So they are very, very skilled. Um, appropriate for today, one of the largest scams was the IRS scam coming out of India, and they were calling, pretending to be the IRS. The IRS does not call you, believe me. I've dealt with the IRS, they do not call you. Um, but the scammers get very aggressive, saying, you've gotta do it now, you've gotta get us iTunes cards. Do never send an iTunes card, never send an iPhone to someone. You know, but that's what they're doing, they're using those, they're using Western Union. Western Union got a slammed in a big settlement uh, which I actually was able to send in paperwork, hopefully to get some money back. But again, just be aware that if it sounds too good, it is. If it sounds free, it's not. It'll get you in the end. But again, they're very well trained and they know how to get us. Um, and we're so unaware. Most of us are very trusting, honest people. And I would never have thought someone that could, someone could have lied to me for over two years. Who could do that and not get caught? But again, I kept good records. I was very well trained. I should have, but I can't go back and shoulda, coulda. You can't change what's happened in the past, but I am very careful going forward. Well, that's this entire conversation has been just solid, really good information about how not to be scammed, what to look for, and then how to turn that adversity into something positive which that's something that I really admire about you because you have turned a lot of adversity into really positive things. And think about it, when you're testifying in the Senate and you're working with AARP and you're talking to the potential of millions of people on television, that is really a powerful statement. And then even like this interview, being able to share that and more and more people will learn about it, your book projects. I love that because it's absolutely true. You know, take the book, write your story in it and leave it behind because you never know who might come up and pick that book up. And that is probably what they need right now to help them. So everyone Daily success, word phrase of the day is stand up. Before I let you go, Debbie, where can people get in contact with you? Well, they can go to the website, which is thewomanbehindthesmile.com. They can email me at Debbie, which is D-E-B-B-Y, at thewomanbehindthesmile.com. And I really do want to hear from, especially if you know of someone that is either being scammed or has been scammed that might need someone to, to talk to them, I really do like want to do that. Um, I feel the one-on-one -on -one is really important. And, and I have a lot of women that, that are now involved that can, can talk to someone and, and offer them support. Um, my company is benfocomplete.com. We didn't really talk about that, but it's right. an extraordinary vitamin supplement that helps diabetics with neuropathy. And I, I run that with my father, uh, Dr. Jack, and uh, they can get us at benfocomplete.com. Um, so I'm available. I'm here and I'm out with the uh, WPN, the Women's Prosperity Network, and just trying to put myself out there in places that, you know, there are, there are men and women that need to hear the story. And, and I'm available to speak about it. If you know anybody that has a, a group that needs to have a message that is different, but that is not different, 
Um, I mean, my story, yes, is, is quite interesting and it's, it, most people do not get scammed um, for a million dollars, but we all get taken at some point in our lives and it's, it's how you recover from it and how you get over it. And thank you for, for saying that about being on, moving on from adversity, because I find the hardest thing for me is when I'm working with women and they do not want to move on. They do not want to drop the past. They keep, you know, I have one person that is keeps thinking of something that happened when she was two and she's 67. And I'm like, at some point you have to put the past behind you because either the people that have hurt you are dead. They don't care what's happened anyway. You're just hurting yourself. So it's important to uh, own up and, and move forward and do it with a smile on your face. You might be dying inside, but you'll feel a lot better if you can do some service to someone else and realize that your story will help somebody else in addition to yourself. Well, that is the absolute truth. Everyone, daily success, word of the day phrase, stand up. We've been talking with Debbie Montgomery Johnson today, and just go check out everything she's saying and tell your story. You know, stand up. Sometimes it's hard, and just like Debbie just said, sometimes you just got to let it go, but writing about it, talking about it, sharing it can be very helpful. So thank you so much, Debbie. I really appreciate it. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thanks, Tammy. This is Tammy Patzer, and this is Daily Success, Word of the Day. Thanks. You've been listening to Daily Success. Tune in again and subscribe. Never miss a moment of Daily Success.